Shalom everyone, grace and peace be unto you. Welcome back to my channel. It is good that we can meet in this particular space another time. And indeed God is good. He is faithful and we just continue to give him all the glory, the honor and the praise that is due to his name. Today I want to be sharing with you from Leviticus chapter 19 and I want to be sharing with you on a particular verse that is there and it is... Um, called the forbidden mixtures we want to be talking about that a little bit as a matter of fact leviticus chapter 19 could be titled um what holiness looks like because it speaks specifically to holiness a few weeks ago i did a video titled the holiness of god and um as we continue this study through the book of leviticus we see that the theme of this particular book is speaks to holiness god is the one who sets the standard of holiness and this is exactly what is happening with these instructions that we will read in chapter 19 he is pointing the way as to how israel should live holy lives right so um last session i talked about fleeing sexual immorality <laughs> And I made a point that Leviticus chapter 18 is the only book in the Bible that gives complete understanding of what sexual immorality is like. And so the call to holiness, right, is to avoid every kind of immoral immorality because where there is separation from immoral immorality, there is holiness. Where there is separation, there is holiness and God's desire is that his people come to know him in a very personal way and to walk in holiness according to the scripture okay so um I want to share an edited version of a vision the Lord gave me a while back right in this vision he showed me an abandoned baby crying um Consider what an abandoned child, baby, baby, baby looks like, right? And I, I, I saw this abandoned baby and I took up this abandoned baby. I held this abandoned baby in my hand and I'm rocking the baby. And uh, the spirit of the Lord opened the scripture to show me some symbols. And so when I asked the meaning of the symbols, the spirit of the Lord says to me that the symbols represents the baby and the baby represents the malnourished church. Actually, I did a video titled The Malnourished Church, and I would want to encourage you to go and have a look because it is gonna be helpful to you, right? In that vision, I know the Spirit of the Lord reveals that the body of believers is malnourished because believers have moved away from its source of nutrients which is the Hebrew scripture, the foundational scripture. And what we see happening is that there is just so much danger that is taking place in the body of believers because of this one action. Um, people are moving away daily from the very pillars of truth that is written in the word. And so the Lord revealed the church as a malnourished baby. But I know what is happening now is that God is calling back his people to the foundation of truth. He is calling back his people to the word. And, uh, and it is happening in a mighty way because the spirit of the Lord is at work, right? And so we're, we're, we're talking on the subject of holiness. And this is where we see God giving the principles, the standard, the blueprint, the manual, manual, call it whatever you, it, you will, um, as it relates to holiness. And so the point is, <clears throat> if God's holy standards and principles are removed right that will allow for man-made doctrines and religions to be elevated above scripture as the source of truth that is where the danger is 
if it is a load then um the very pillars would have been shaken but the god who is eternal whose word belongs to him he will not allow that to happen because he will continue to call out people he will continue to anoint and to bring um revelation to people to teach the word of truth because the word of truth is still valid as it was then it is still valid for our time right it was upon these foundational principles that Yeshua himself based every one of his teachings right and it is the belief if it is the belief that the very things that God call evil is now accepted and is normalized as being good then something is very wrong with that theology something is very wrong because God has spoken and he will his word remain right so it, it's like saying the God who never changes has changed his mind the God who never changes has changed and from scripture God does not present himself in that context right so in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2, we see God declare, declaring himself as holy. And he says, you shall be holy for I am holy. Many people today will argue that holiness is impossible. And so um, some pay just kind of lip service or scant regard to holiness. The statement about being holy as God is holy means that we are to imitate. To imitate, the word of God here is not speaking to perfection because we know that we will not experience perfection in this life. But well, we are called to imitate and it speaks to maturity and it speaks to obedience right we are to imitate god whose very nature is holiness and that kind of holiness should be expressed in our everyday life it should be expressed in our as our moral integrity which must in turn be manifested in our behavior and our actions it should not just be our intention right because there has to be an outflow a manifestation of what is happening on the inside and so the whole purpose of god's plan for man is to express and to manifest god's will as is revealed in scripture from from the beginning of time until today that is god's desire that his will <clears throat> be expressed through man right and so as we speak of holiness holiness is an inner condition that must be expressed outwardly to have any practical value right god is not a god who is holy who behaves in an unholy way he's, he's not like us right we, he who we say one thing but our action does not most times action does not match up with the word, right? So for us to claim holiness because of our relationship with it, we're sure, put it this way, the fact that we come to faith in Yeshua, <coughs> um, it, it, that should cause us to, to, to change our whole attitude and our actions, right? We are to be separated from the world and the things of the world the fact that we come to faith it, it is not left at that point but we have a responsibility to take the instructions and to walk the path of holiness right and so when we when we when our belief does not line up with our decisions and actions when our beliefs are separated from our our decisions and our actions um, from that of inner holiness when when we're not seeing the reflection it makes or uh, it makes people 
what is called hypocrites, right? And so um, Yeshua, in many of his teachings, he speaks much about um, the Pharisees. He referred to them so often as hypocrites because they do they say one thing and they do the opposite of what they say, right? Um, and so be, being a hypocrite is, is not, it's not good to be named in the body of Messiah, right? And uh, when the world look, at the at, at, at believers, they are looking to see something different. They are looking to see that they are not like us, and they are looking to see that they don't um, do the same kind of things that we do. They don't practice the same kind of things that we do. Like um, they don't do the same thing. They don't do the. They, they are not involved in sexual immorality. They are not involved in dishonesty. The way they dress, it is not unbecoming. These are some of the things, you know, that the world is looking for. And when they are not able to see the distinction, when there is no difference, where, when there is no line drawn, when there are no borders, it tells a message that is not good, right? And... Uh, we are called to be light to those who are in darkness. Um, Yeshua said that we should be like that light that is set upon a hill. The light that is going to lead others to God's holy Torah, to his word, to his instructions as to how we should live. And so we want to make a distinction, right? Um... I, I want to share a quote I read from First Fruits of Zion. I, I do read a lot of their materials, and it says that the Torah says that when a religious person conducts himself without integrity, he profanes the name of God. And the word profane is the word um, holy. Holy means set apart, right? Um, let, let me just go back a bit. I need to say this right. The Torah says that when a religious person conducts himself without integrity, he profanes the name of God. The word profane is the opposite of the word holy. Holy means um, set apart. Profane means common and ordinary. So when a religious person conducts himself no differently than the common, ordinary people around him, he makes God look common and ordinary, right? He basically damages God's reputation. Um, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, the apostle Paul writes, how much more se severely do you think that someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the spirit of grace? Right? When the Lord gave the instruction to Israel to put the blood upon the lintels and the sides and the top of the door, he did not tell them to put the blood on the surface of the door because the blood would run down and the, the Israelites would have to walk on the blood or trample on the blood to get into their homes, making it common. And so we're learning here the importance of being holy, the importance of making distinction, the importance of making a separation, right? And let us not bring this covenantal walk and make it common. Because this is what the Apostle Paul is saying, you know. He who treated as unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit 
of grace. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished? So what God is saying, the people who do these things, the people who are trampling the commandments, the people who are diluting his word, they will be severely punished. That's the word of God, right? And so the verse I want to share on from Leviticus 19 is verse 19, and it says, you shall observe my decrees, you shall not mate your animal to another species. You shall not plant your field with mixed seed and a garment that is a mixture of combined fibers shall not come upon you. And so it is called the forbidden mixture. Um, as we continue to study scripture, we see that um, a lot of stuff is forbidden. And even in this instruction, right, that is related to Israel. But I'm sure there are principles, spiritual principles we can learn and make application to. So we sometimes ask, what is the purpose of all of these instructions? And we don't understand it fully. It's not absolutely necessary. But I want to say today, it is simply God's sovereign decision as to, as to what improper mixing is all about and so we may not have all the answers but what we can learn what we can do is ask the holy spirit to teach us more and help us to obey the instructions written in scripture right all of the commandments of torah in one way or the other reveal the holiness of messiah our savior right and so the commandment of god defines holy conduct how we should be different from the people around how we should live separate lives from the nations because we we are god's people israel has been called god's people set apart for his purpose and so um yeshua says um not my will but yours be done that's the point we may not understand it fully but because God says so, we need to get to the point where we're now able to say, not my will, but your will be done, right? And he also says, I do nothing on my own initiative, right? He came to represent his father, but I speak the things as the father taught me, right? And he did not leave it there. He says, I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. And we read that in St. John chapter 15, verse 10. So the commandment that I just read, um, we although if, if we that was a practical um, um, commandment for them to do, but we are now looking on it in a spiritual context, right? And what is behind this commandment? What is God really saying to us, right? God is setting boundaries and uh, boundaries are the result of one of God's most fundamental principles in scripture. He set boundaries. He, it divides, elects and separates the holy from the unholy, right? The clean from the unclean, good from evil and not only that, he sets principle in determining or defining between his people and the nations of the world. And so since God makes these distinctions and set up the boundaries, we see that coming out from the book of Genesis, right? We see that it is man's natural evil inclination to try and to blur, to change the distinction to 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 edit to to water down right the distinctions and uh, to dismantle basically the boundaries to satisfy selfish desires we see that coming out from genesis when god gave his instruction to adam it was disobeyed and resulted in the fall of man right and so i want us to examine the text the forbidden mixtures 
The law is that those who love the Lord are not to mix things that are set aside for life with things that are destined for destruction. We are not to mix the holy with the unholy, the clean with the unclean, right? We are not to redesignate things that God calls evil as good or vice versa. We are not to replace God's laws with our with man's man's um, theological philosophy, right? And they are called doctrines. And so the instructions are there. And so to do any of these things is really to create confusion. And if there was never a time we see confusion in the body of Messiah, then it is no. There is just so much confusion going on, right? Confusion. And the confusion is completely at odds with the Lord's attributes of holiness, of wholeness and of his order, how he set things, how it should be done, right? And man is doing everything, man is trying everything to usurp God's divine will and purpose. And so, we're, so there is confusion everywhere. So there's confusion um, it, is, it is in the world today. I mean, the world, whole world is in confusion. Why? Because of a direct result of improper mixing. Mixing forbidden mixtures at all levels of society. So when you get to the point, like I made mention last week in this session, I did on, sec on um, immorality. When you get to the point where even the church is normalizing homosexuality, normalizing abortions, normalizing these things, and they're called human rights, it tells you, I mean, where the level of confusion and how it impacts, you know, the body of Messiah and what is God saying about this. He had spoken from the beginning of time, and on and today he it, he is still speaking. Nothing has changed, right? He set the standards, and we need to maintain those standards. And so the apostle Paul also make a similar expression in Second Corinthians chapter six verse fourteen. He says, "Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath?" righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness the apostle paul was not making a new theology you now he was simply stating the torah principle this very principle that we're talking about he was simply stating the principle of what holiness looks like right um actually he was referring to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 10, where it is said that an ox and a donkey are not to be brought into union to pull a plow, right? The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians here, he's making the point that um, righteousness should never be mixed with unrighteousness. He's making the point that light, um, light should not be mixed with darkness. Right, what the apostle Paul was doing here is what Yeshua himself taught, and that we too should be teaching people, and what we should be doing, we should be seeking to, instead of arguing against God's word and His instructions, we should seek to reapply, right? Not to bring our own interpretation, but to see how we make these into. Um, spiritual application in our lives, right? Um, we can't be at the same level with unbelievers. It does mean that you don't talk to people, I mean, who don't yet come to faith in Messiah. It means that we can't live the same way they live. We have to be different. Um, the Apostle Paul, right, he, he speaks a lot from the foundation of scripture and he takes it from a pure physical 
because this was a physical um, instruction that was given and he, you know, to make it into, in, and we know, can now see the spiritual aspect of that, right? So these are basically defined as boundaries that God, that is established by God between, in his word, it shows righteousness and unrighteousness. From back in Genesis, we see he separated light from darkness, right? Light from darkness, and we can look at it also in, in a spiritual, the spiritual essence of that. The physical nor the spiritual boundaries are to be blurred or crossed. If God says it is improper, don't do it. He says it is called forbidden mixture improperly mixed God made a definite distinction between light and darkness as a matter of fact we are called to come out of darkness and come into the marvelous light come out of darkness and the practices of darkness so what is happening here is that every time Every time we, we mankind choose to do his own thing and to elevate that above the written word of God, what is happening is that the kingdom of darkness is extending. The kingdom of darkness is being strengthened, right? And so those who are light no need to become more active to make the, the kingdom of darkness basically shrink right and so um these instructions they are just simple instructions there are some things believers in messiah cannot do it was set for israel in that way because they had to be different from the nations of the world and the same principle applied to us the same principle that we must be different from the people of the world. And so the pathway to holiness is written in God's eternal manual, right? And as we come to faith in Yeshua the Messiah, it doesn't stop there. The journey continues. We are called to live lives of holiness and it is for God's glory for kingdom expansion because the, when people come to walk in the light it's going to attract more people more people will come in and more people will continue to come into the kingdom of the light amen and so people of god um these are just simple bible truth that we need to live by holiness is defined by God, not by man. And so sometimes I hear like um, people say, you know, when you see a person who try to live that life of holiness, I've heard on many occasions people say, oh, um, he, he is so holy, holy, or she is so holy, holy. God's standard of holiness remain. When people try to walk circumspectly, you hear, different negative comments coming from believers also right but the fact remain that god established boundaries he established borders he established principles and it is documented in the word my prayer for each of us all of us is that we return to the path that leads to holiness and get into the word of the Lord. God bless you. Until we meet again. Thank you for listening.